Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have 3 to the power square root of x plus 6 to the power square root of x equals 12 to the power square root of x. So this is a non-standard equation because we have the same exponent but different bases and they're also being added together. But this is a special type of equation because 12 multiplied by 3 is equal to 36, which is 6 squared. Make sense? So when I take two of the bases and multiply together, that gives me the third base squared. Whenever you have a situation like this, you got a good solution. And let's find out. First of all, I notice that when I look at either side, 3 to the x, I mean 3 to the square root of x, plus 6 to the square root of x is an increasing function, isn't it? Because as x increases, y is going to increase. Of course, we have a limitation here. x needs to be greater than or equal to 0. Obviously, this equation or this function is only going to appear to the right of the y-axis. All right? And then the same thing goes for 12 to the power square root of x. That's also going to be an increasing function. So we have two increasing functions equal to each other. Hmm. That doesn't help right? If one of them was decreasing and the other one was increasing, then you could kind of say, hey, there's a single point of intersection. For example, one graph could go like this and the other one could go like this. Obviously not like that, but you get the idea. They'll intersect at a single point. That's not the case, but we can still do something about this. So let's go ahead and do the following. Divide everything or both sides by 12 to the power square root of x because it's the largest base. Make sense? So take this, divide by 12 to the power square root of x, take the right hand side, divide by 12 to the power square root of x, right? What do you get on the left hand side? You get a sum, so we can go ahead and split it up into this plus this, right? And then on the right hand side, we're getting 1. That's nice. Now let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit more. From here, since the exponents are equal, I can divide the bases. Remember the rule, the rules of exponents are important. And if you divide a to the n by b to the n, that is equivalent to a divided by b together to the power n. Okay? So we can write it as 3 over 12 to the power square root of x plus 6 over 12 for the same reason to the power square root of x equals 1. Awesome. Let's simplify this a little bit more. How so? 3 over 12 can be written as 1 over 4, right? And 6 over 12 can be written as 1 half. Great. Both of them simplifies. So we can go ahead and write this as 1 fourth to the power square root of x plus 1 half to the power square root of x equals 1. Awesome. What do we do next? We pay attention to the fact that 1 fourth is 1 half squared. What does that mean? Let's find out. 1 fourth to the power square root of x can be written as 1 half squared to the power square root of x. And then rule, the rule says we are supposed to multiply the exponents, which gives us 1 half to the power 2 times square root of x, which can then be written as 1 half to the power square root of x to the power 2, because again, they're multiplied in a different way, but we have the commutative property, right? Okay, so in other words, a to the power mn is the same as a to the power nm. Make sense? Great. Now, we can go ahead and do the following. We replace 1 fourth to the power square root of x with 1 half to the power square root of x squared, if you want, use brackets to distinguish, and then plus 1 half to the square root of x equals 1. What does this tell you? It should tell you to substitute, yes. Let's go ahead and call this something. How about u? All right. If you call that u, then this will be u squared. So we get u squared plus u equals 1. Okay? And then we can solve this because this is quadratic. Nice. Let's go ahead and subtract 1 and then use the quadratic formula 
and we got the solutions. Notice that one of the solutions is negative and the other one is positive, right? So let's go ahead and look at both cases. Case number one. One half to the power square root of x, which is u, right? That's what u is, u r, u is. This is equal to negative one plus root five over two. And negative one plus root five over two is greater than zero because root five is greater than one. Great, this is important because any positive base to any real power must be greater than zero, right? As long as the base is not zero, it's not gonna be zero. So, but that doesn't tell us what x is. Well, we'll, we'll get there. So since the right-hand side is positive, we have a real solution, or do we? Let's ln both sides, ln this equals ln that. And can I just switch these around because it just bothers me. I wanna write it this way. It just looks a little better. Now we can go ahead and move this power right and write this as square root of x times ln one half equals ln root five minus one over two have you realized did you realize why i wrote it that way because i'm going to divide both sides by ln one half and get the square root of x from there yes now we're looking for x though this is square root of x so what am i supposed to do square both sides exactly let's do that square and square so from here, x becomes, and obviously, a number may have two square roots if uh, we're talking about complex roots. A number is going to have a single square root if we're talking about reals or may not have any. But when you square a number, it's going to have a unique answer. Make, you see the difference? Okay. Even in the complex world, something squared is going to be unique. So that is going to be this number squared that divided by the number. I don't think writing them separately as squares is going to make it simpler, but this is good enough. So that's x. Can I write it again? Sure. But I don't think we can simplify this. Just leave it as is and you should be okay. So square this number and you got x. Make sense? Cool. By the way, one thing to be careful about is we said that, okay, square root of x is equal to this right? Square root of x, remember, was equal to ln of root 5 minus 1 over 2 divided by ln of 1 half. How do we know that this is a positive quantity or is it a positive quantity? Because if it's not, then we're not going to have a real solution because square root of x is greater than or equal to 0, right? Well, here's the thing. We know this is a positive quantity because this is negative, that's negative. How do we know? This is less than 1 and this is less than 1. How do we know this is less than 1? Because this is less than 2. How do we know that? Because this is less than 3. Make sense? You get the idea? Okay. So that's a positive quantity. Don't worry. I checked it for you. That's positive. So we got a good solution. Let's go ahead and look at the second possibility, which is the complex one. Because this time, you have a negative u. This is negative, less than 0, right? So we don't have any real solutions. Those solutions are non-real. But let's do the same thing. And when we do, I, I'm going to ln both sides, obviously. I'm going to get something like this. But I don't want to just ln a negative number. So I'm going to write it as ln of a positive number times negative 1. So I kind of took out the negativity. And so I have a positive piece. But ln of a product, so I'm going to write it this way. I'd like to separate these and write it as ln 1 plus root 5 over 2 which is a positive logarithm, like it's a positive number, so it's normal real log, plus ln of a negative one. Actually, I should write probably log of negative one. And actually, negative one can be written as, but ln means log here, uh, can be written as e to the power 2n plus 1 multiplied by pi i. In other words, if you consider odd powers of pi i, you will get e to the power that will give you negative i. All right? Wait a minute. Did I say negative i? No. It's going to give you a negative 1. Because if you think about it on the argand plane, this is where negative 1 is. And its argument is pi. And then, of course, pi plus multiples of 2 pi is going to give you odd multiples of pi. In other words, like pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, 7 pi, they are all equivalent to pi in that sense. So you can bring it to the front because ln e to the z is just z. So this becomes square root of x ln 1 half 
equals ln 1 plus root 5 over 2 plus 2n plus 1 pi i. We're not done yet because we're still going to divide both sides by ln 1 half. And then you can go ahead and divide this thing. Like if you want to write it like this, it's probably going to be a little easier to square this way because you'll have a common denominator. And if you don't like it, you can get rid of it all the time, separate it. But you're going to square both sides. And guess what? That's going to give you the answer. But when you square, I want you to be careful about one thing that you're going to square this, right? And then when you square the second piece, you're going to get a minus sign with a 2n plus 1 squared, pi squared, because i squared is negative 1. And then plus 2ab, blah, 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 is going to give you the answer. And of course, the numerator also needs to be squared. Make sense? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.